Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my designer handbag collection video, and I don't have the largest collection out there by any means, but I do have 10 bags to share with you guys today, and I'm going to let you guys know what my favorite aspect of each handbag is, as well as the thing that I think is the biggest con about them too. And I'm also going to let you guys know if I would repurchase the bags, if for whatever reason they were no longer in my collection. And I have dedicated videos on my channel reviewing most of these handbags, so where they're applicable, I'll leave them linked up here on the screen, as well as all of them will be linked in the description box below. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of these handbags, definitely do check out some of those videos. And if you like this video and general videos on luxury, fashion, and style tips, I think you'll really like my channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do consider checking out my channel, maybe watch a few more of my other videos, and subscribe as well as hit the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post a new video, which is at least every single Thursday. And I'm going to go through these bags from the smallest bag that I own to the largest bag that I own. So let's get into the video. This first bag is from Saint Laurent and it is the Kate bag with the tassel at the bottom. And I have this in a black suede material with silver metallic threads running through it. And this bag closes with a magnetic closure that is pretty tight, so it's good that it's very secure. And it also comes with a detachable crossbody strap that is mostly a metal chain, but it does have this leather piece at the top. I mostly usually wear this as strictly a clutch, but it is nice that they do give you a strap to wear over your shoulder or crossbody if you want to. My favorite aspect about this bag definitely is the tassel detail. I think it's very unique to Saint Laurent. And I think it really makes this bag that much more special. But what I don't really like about this bag is the magnetic closure. The good thing about the magnet is it is pretty strong, so you do need to use a bit of strength to pull the magnet apart and open the bag. But when you're closing it, it doesn't want to snap right back into place. I kind of have to wiggle this flap around and fiddle with it a little bit to get it to snap closed. And that's a little bit annoying. And the more I open and close this bag, the more irritated I am with the closure. So if I didn't have this bag in my collection anymore, I actually would not repurchase it. There's just so many other bags from Saint Laurent that look very similar to this, just without this tassel detail. And because so many of them look very similar, there's probably a better one out there that has a better closure that isn't as irritating and annoying to use. This next bag is also from Saint Laurent and it's also another clutch or wallet on a chain style bag. And it is the YSL monogram wallet on a chain, which I have in this blush pink color with silver hardware. So this bag is a little bit bigger than the one that I just showed you previously. Similar to that bag, it also comes with this detachable strap, but the difference is this strap is completely a metal chain strap instead of having the leather piece at the very top of it. And this strap is also a little bit shorter too, so while you can technically wear this crossbody because it is such a flat shape and it won't stick out awkwardly, on your body, it does sit a little bit higher up. So while I do wear this crossbody sometimes, just keep in mind that it's a personal preference if you're okay with a bag sitting higher up on your body when you wear a crossbody. What I really love about this bag is even though it is such a small bag, there are two separate open compartments on the inside and you do get the zippered pocket over here too. And one thing that I personally like in a handbag is if it has a compartment that I can put my phone in separate from everything else. And what I like about this is that I can just put my phone in the front over here and then I can put everything in the back over here. And it doesn't get too bulky even though I'm able to put almost all my essentials in it. Sometimes I do have to leave out a pack of tissues because it is a little bulkier, but aside from that, I can fit everything else in here just fine. But one negative thing I have to say about this bag is it doesn't stand up on its own because the bottom of it is curved. So when I'm sitting down at a restaurant, for example, I do have to lie this down flat either on the table or on the chair. And I just prefer my bags to stand upright because I think it's a little more sanitary when you're in a public space. And when I store this away in my closet, I do have to lean this up against something else 
because if I were to lie it down flat, I'm afraid that the chevron pattern quilting will eventually deflate over time. But even though there is that tiny minor annoyance with it, I absolutely would repurchase this bag if it was no longer in my collection. I use this bag so much in the summer because it absolutely goes with everything. So it's definitely a must have in my collection. The last mini bag in my collection is also my newest handbag purchase and it is the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy, which I was able to get before the price of it increased recently. But unfortunately, because I've been at home most of the time, I haven't really had the chance to use this. Still, based off of what I know about this bag so far and my first impressions of it, my favorite aspect of this bag is how much you're able to fit in it given its relatively small size. But what I don't like about it is even though it does come with a crossbody strap, the strap isn't adjustable nor is it detachable. So luckily, it is a good length for me to wear both over one shoulder as well as crossbody. But if I'm using this bag by the top handles, the strap does hang a little far down from my liking and it's almost touching the ground. So I would just prefer if it was detachable. And since I just got this bag, I don't think it's quite fair for me to say if I would repurchase this bag if I no longer had it. But I guess since I haven't returned the bag at the very least, I guess I would repurchase it. Next up are all my medium size handbags and I'm basing this off of the brands labeling the size as the medium size model. So amongst these five bags that I have in this category, there's a little bit of a size variance amongst them. So the first bag is my Chanel reissue flap, which I have in the 225 size in black with ruthenium hardware. And I absolutely love this bag. I love how understated it is and it literally goes with all of my outfits whether I'm super dressed up or whether I'm wearing something very casual, I could grab this bag and wear with any of my outfits. And on top of that, I just have to say another one of my favorite aspects about this. I really love how this bag does come folded down flat when you first buy it. And I also am able to fold this bag down if I ever wanted to pack it for vacation, for example and I don't have to worry about it getting squished in my luggage or anything because it is folded down flat. So this is one of my favorite bags to take on vacation for that reason, along with the fact that because it is understated, I do feel a little bit safer carrying it on vacation. So the only thing that kind of irks me a slight bit about this bag is the chain does kind of leave indents on my shoulder if I carry it on my shoulder for too long. It's not that it hurts or anything, so it's really a minor inconvenience at most. And as you can probably tell, I would absolutely repurchase this bag in a heartbeat if for whatever reason I lost it or it just wasn't in my collection anymore. Continuing on with Chanel, the next bag is my medium large classic flap, which I have in black, but this is with the gold hardware instead. And I have this in lambskin, but when I first bought this bag, I actually bought it in the caviar leather, but I ended up selling that bag so I could repurchase it in lambskin because I just absolutely love lambskin. There's really nothing quite like it because it is so buttery soft and it looks a lot glossier than caviar does, as well as colors look so saturated in lambskin whether you go for a dark color like black or whether you go for a lighter or brighter color too. But I do have to say that this is a little bit on the flashy side and a lot of people do recognize that this is a Chanel bag and that it costs a lot of money. So I don't always like to draw so much attention to myself and because of that, I don't wear this bag as much as I really should, especially for the price. But although I do think that's a bit of a con, it kind of is self-inflicted. And I do absolutely love this bag, so if I didn't have it in my collection for whatever reason, I absolutely would repurchase it. Especially since it was my holy grail bag for so long, since I was back in high school actually, and I can't imagine not having this in my collection. The last Chanel bag in my collection is another classic flap, and this one is in this gorgeous iridescent purple color. I believe this is a capskin material, and it has this shiny, gunmetal colored hardware on it. 
This is my most unique bag by far, and it was actually a very special gift from my husband. There's a very funny story behind how he gifted this to me, but I'm not going to tell it in this video because I'm trying to get him to film a video with me where he rates my handbag collection. So I'm going to let him tell the story himself, but he's a little bit shy and he's not sure if he wants to do that video with me. So if you want to see that video, leave in the comments down below that you want to see it and give him a little bit of encouragement so he'll actually film it with me. And what I really love about this bag, aside from it is such a sentimental piece, I really love the color of this bag. It does look purple for the most part, but because it is an iridescent color, it does have this sort of greenish teal color shift to it and at certain angles it looks teal instead of purple. So I absolutely love how unique the bag is. But because it is such a unique color, I don't really wear it that much because it is quite hard to match with any of my outfits. I do have to wear something very, very neutral, usually either something all black or all white to go with this bag. So unfortunately, I do have to say that I wouldn't repurchase this bag because especially with Chanel's price increase now, I don't think it's worth it to pay that amount of money for a bag that I really wouldn't wear that often. But I would never let myself misplace or lose this bag, so I would never have to repurchase it again. This next bag is from Dior, and it is my medium lady Dior, which I have in this navy color with the matching navy hardware. And I've wanted a Lady Dior for so long before finally getting this bag. What was stopping me from getting a Lady Dior earlier is the typical Lady Dior usually has the zipper opening on top. And I just was not interested in having to stretch open the zipper whenever I wanted to put anything in my bag or take anything out. But this one has the flap style opening on top and it is so much easier to use. This bag also comes with an adjustable detachable strap. And what I really love about this bag is how seamlessly it's able to blend the elegant ladylike look of the Lady Dior bag along with the more casual edge that you get from this matte leather and the matching colored hardware. One very small con I have to say about this bag is the handles don't fall all the way down. It just sits at this very awkward 90 degree angle and I just wish that it folded all the way down but it is a very small con. Aside from that, I really do love this bag and I've only had it for approximately a year at this point and I've gotten so much wear out of it. So if this was no longer in my collection for whatever reason, I absolutely would repurchase this. The last medium size bag I have to show you guys before we move on to the tote bags is my medium Fendi Peekaboo, which I have in this dove gray color with the tortoiseshell details on it. And this is the oldest bag in my collection. I've had this for over four years, and even though I don't use this as much as I used to, I still absolutely love it. This bag has two equally sized compartments, one at the front and one in the back. And on the front compartment, you also have this additional zipper pocket on the inside, and you also get this detachable and adjustable strap with it. My favorite aspect about this bag is how you get the ladylike and elegant look of a top handle bag. But while a lot of top handle bags have a flap opening that isn't the easiest to use, this one you can just reach your hand in through the top and it's really easy to use this bag functionally. But what I don't like about this bag is it's very loud. There are various pieces of hardware that bang against each other and make a lot of noise and it kind of gets annoying after a while but i still do love this bag even though i don't really use it as much anymore like i just said so if i didn't have this in my collection i would definitely still add it back the first of two tote bags in my collection is my dior book toe which i have in the small size in this beautiful toile de jouy pattern and i have it in the navy color Similar to my Nano Speedy, this is one of my newest handbag purchases. So because I've been at home most of the time, I haven't really had the chance to use this bag. So I'm basing my favorite and least favorite aspects of this bag on my first impressions of it. And my favorite aspect is definitely the gorgeous print on this bag. 
I really love this twat and dream pattern. I love these cute little tigers and sloths that are embroidered onto the canvas. And I really love this pattern so much that I even bought some clothing items that are in a very similar type of twat and dream pattern too. But my least favorite aspect about this bag is I just wish that these handles were a tiny bit longer so I could more comfortably wear this over my shoulder. Currently, this does fit over my shoulder, but it's a little bit of a tight fit. And even though it works right now when I'm wearing less layers, I don't think I could really do the same in the winter. Even though I don't really plan on using this bag in the winter because it is kind of a summery print, but I do like to have that option, even though I won't be using it in the winter. And because this bag sits so closely to my underarms, first of all, it's not comfortable, of course. And secondly, I'm afraid that since I do use deodorant, this part of the bag right here will get dirty very easily with deodorant marks or anything of that sort. And I know a lot of people talk about how the handles might get dirty as you're holding it like this and they would wrap a silk scarf around the handle, for example, you can't really do the same to this part of the bag right here. So I think that this part getting dirty is a little bit more concerning to me than the handles getting dirty, but I haven't really gotten to use this bag, so we'll see what happens. And it's not really completely fair for me to say whether I would repurchase this bag or not, but similar to the Nano Speedy, since I haven't returned it, I guess I'll say that I would repurchase it. The final bag I have to share with you guys is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull, which I have in the MM size, in the Damier Aben print with the Rose Valerie lining on the inside. And this is such a popular bag and so many people have it. And I think it's for a good reason because this is such an easy bag to just grab and head out the door with. I keep all my daily essentials in this bag because in the morning when I don't really have the time to switch my handbag for the day, I'll just quickly grab this and run out the door and I don't have to worry about leaving any of my essentials at home. One con about this bag though is because it is so big and you can fit so much in there, if you do load up this bag, it does get quite heavy and because these shoulder straps are pretty thin, they will start to dig into your shoulders. But you can combat that by just not putting as much stuff in your bag because on its own, this bag is made of canvas, which is quite light. And because it doesn't have any bells and whistles on it, on its own, it's not going to weigh as much as a lot of other bags with a similar capacity. And this is one of my best luxury purchases ever. So of course, if I lost this bag or something of the sort, I would absolutely repurchase it. So these are all my luxury designer handbags and I really hope you enjoyed this video and like seeing some of this handbag eye candy. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments down below which of these bags is your personal favorite as well as what is your holy grail handbag. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like videos about handbags or luxury and fashion in general, do consider subscribing to my channel as well as hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post a new video. And I'll leave two videos on the screen for you to watch next. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.